Miranda, what do you see for him post-election? Let's assume for, pretty safely that it's going to be this big red wave that everyone sees coming. Well, I mean, you just laid it out perfectly well. He's a lying, vindictive jerk. He always has been. And he also is in very poor health. And I'm not excited about that. I don't want any harm to come to Joe Biden. But if he is suffering from dementia or whatever he's suffering from, having a Republican House and Republican Senate is going to add a stress level that I think is going to be physically very dangerous for him on top of everything else. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, he doesn't really seem to be affected by stress. He's this odd sort of person, uh, sort of, I would call it a con man persona, who really gets uh, calmer as the sort of cops are knocking on the door. Um, so I, I don't think he'll be affected by stress. I think what will happen, though, is that his party, uh, which has just, you know, hung on to him until now to try and give the, the sort of facade that everything is going well, sort of a Potemkin presidency, and they've covered up for him up to a point. Uh, but already you're seeing, as this sort of red tsunami seems inevitable, you're seeing people like Gavin Newsom, you're seeing columnists like George Will, uh, and, and even Don Lamont, uh, start to back away a million hours from Joe Biden and start saying things about, you know, perhaps using the 25th Amendment, uh, saying that he is not able to pivot, that he is too old, he can't run again, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and you're seeing Kamala sort of come out and try and burnish her reputation, although I don't know if that's actually possible. And, of course, you're seeing Gavin Newsom, mm -hmm. uh, who seems to be the kind of the guy who's who's measuring the, the White House for, for uh, curtains. Um, he's coming yeah. out and sort of acting like a statesman. So I, I think they'll, they'll get rid of Joe Biden before 2024, and they'll try to cobble together some sort of a, a regime or administration that's more palatable to the American people and try and win back, you know, suburban white women, um, Hispanics, um, you know, independents, and a lot of Democrats who have now realized uh, that they, the error of their ways when they went with Joe Biden. Miranda, I want to ask you just real quick, because you have a great piece today I want people to go read in the New York Post titled, How the Government Hid the Truth Behind Hunter Biden's Laptop. It was a eye-opening read for me, at least hit the high points so people can go read this thing. Well, look, I go into the Intercept story about the uh, incredible collusion between uh, the Department, Department of Homeland Security, but also the FBI and the Biden administration uh, and big tech. And, uh, and, and into that, I've added this new book that's coming out from John Paul MacIsaac, uh, the wonderful hero of the Biden laptop story, uh, who was the computer repair shop owner, of course, and um, just the travails that he had and how the FBI uh, abused him. He trusted them and they buried the laptop. He was savvy enough to suspect that. He kept a copy and he managed finally to contact Rudy Giuliani and the rest is history. Uh, but in the meantime, he's been harassed, driven out of business. The IRS came after him. Uh, he is a true American <laughs> hero and I hope everyone gets his book, American Injustice. It's out uh, at the end of this month.